Hi everyone, my name is Holly and I'm a dental hygienist here in Canada. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about the newer product by High Smile that they have just come out with in recent months called PAP Teeth Whitening Strips. Um, it's a brand new technology that they have created to provide te uh, teeth whitening with less sensitivity versus traditional methods using either carbamide or hydrogen peroxide. I'm always really interested when newer products like this come on the market because, well, one, I want to know that it's actually effective to use. I can recommend it safely to my patients and I can use it myself because I have a history of a lot of tooth sensitivity when I whiten my teeth. So I'm really happy to be talking about this today. It is important to know I paid for this product out of my own pocket 100%. I'm not sponsored. I wasn't paid to make this video. It's just my passion to provide accurate and informational content for you about products that are on the market now so you don't end up wasting your money. So High Smiles product came out probably a few months ago um, and I bought this off of their website. It got shipped all the way from Australia and I paid crazy amount of duties on it so it would have just been cheaper for me to whiten my teeth at, uh, at where I work but I wanted to try this out for you make sure it's safe to use make sure it's effective and how much teeth whitening we can actually get as a result from this so the main active ingredient in high smiles PAP plus teeth whitening strips is PAP plus and that stands for Philip God, I'm gonna say this wrong. I always do this. Okay, thalimido peroxy caproic acid. For the rest of the video, I'm just gonna say PAP because um, I obviously can't say that word. I'll just write it down below if you're interested uh, in the caption if you wanna see the spelling of it. Um, but what PAP does is it oxidizes the stain molecule within uh, the two structures. The company claims that it causes a lot less to sensitivity. And whenever a company claims that, I get really interested because it is, it is doing something to your teeth. So there's always a chance that tooth sensitivity will occur. However, I looked into it, there's lots of studies that are done by third party people, so not high smile themselves, that actually uh, stand up to this claim. So when teeth are whitened and the, the stain molecules oxidize, within the tooth structure, free radicals can be produced. And that happens when you're using hydrogen or carbamide peroxide. With PAP+, there is no free radical production. So that's why they claim that there's less tooth sensitivity. And the studies and the third party studies claim that as well, and it's proven. So um, I'm gonna try it myself to make sure it stands up to that because I do have a history of tooth sensitivity, especially when whitening. I usually can't finish a full treatment. I only do it for, for maybe a week and then take a break and then do another week, you know, a couple months later. So I try to break it up so I don't get all that tooth sensitivity because it hurts. So within High Smiles PAP teeth whitening strips, they also put the ingredient potassium citrate. Potassium citrate helps to desensitize the nerve endings of the tooth. So the nerve of the tooth can't actually send the pain signal to your brain. So it's also desensitizing the teeth to prevent that tooth sensitivity. They also put in nano hydroxyapatite, which is the um, which helps to remineralize the tooth structure because with teeth, teeth whitening you can get a little bit of demineralization. Um, it's just to protect the integrity of the tooth surface to make sure that there's no damage long term. The studies that have been shown for PAP show that there's no damage um, on the tooth surface when looked at under a microscope and over a longer period of time. So that's really promising. And because of these studies that I read, I feel confident enough and that it's safe enough to use for myself. And that's why I am doing it first on myself. And then I'll see if I actually will recommend this product to my patients or to anyone out there who wants to whiten their teeth with less sensitivity. I like this product because the science is there that it actually works. There's so many products on the market that 
claimed whitened teeth, but isn't actually going to change the tooth structure and how the tooth uh, is colored on the inside. So we can get something called extrinsic stain, which is stain that is present on the outside surface. And that can be from, you know, coffee, tea, whatever. Over time, that stain can be absorbed within the actual tooth. So sometimes that um, these products aren't actually going to work to change the color of the actual tooth structure. So let's take whitening toothpaste, for example. Whitening toothpaste do not whiten teeth, okay? They have abrasives in them that scratch away the surface of the tooth to scratch away that extrinsic or surface stain that's on the teeth. It just, it grinds my gears when I have a patient come in and they tell me that they've been using whitening toothpaste and I can see the damage. I had a patient once come in and he hadn't been in in about three and a half, four years. And he came in and I asked him what his chief complaint was. And he was explaining to me that his front teeth appeared more yellow. So I took a look and all of his enamel was gone from his front teeth. And when I see that, my heart just sinks because there's no way to rebuild enamel once it's gone. I asked him what his habits were, what he was doing, because I wanted to get to the bottom of why his enamel was gone. So because he hadn't been to the dentist in a while, he was thinking his teeth were appearing more yellow. So he took a toothbrush and his whitening toothpaste to work and he would brush at work on top of brushing at home in the morning and at night. So for three and a half, four years, he was using an extremely abrasive whitening toothpaste, thinking that it's going to solve the problem and whiten his teeth, but it actually made his teeth more yellow. Because on the outer surface of our teeth, we have enamel, and that's the white surface. Underneath, we have the dentin. It's softer and more yellow in color. So over time, when you lose enamel on your tooth surface, you can see through to the yellow dentin underneath and that's what it makes the tooth appear more yellow. So we want to prevent that. So please don't use any whitening toothpaste. Don't use charcoal toothpaste. Just avoid those products, please. If it's anything you do, I just don't want you to lose irreplaceable tooth structure. Another product that has zero effect on the teeth is any product that uses light. So LED lights, any of these packaging that comes in and, and you and you whiten your teeth, you put the thing in and the light goes on, it will not make any difference of the color of your teeth. It's a marketing gimmick. They do it to try to um, make people buy their product. They pay influencers to use this product in order for other people to buy it. You know how that all works. But for me, it breaks my heart again because people are being duped into buying products that don't actually work to whiten their teeth. And that's why with the High Smile PAP, I'm really excited about this product because the studies show that it will actually whiten your teeth. So every day for the next week, I'm going to use this product twice a day. I am going to film myself putting it on and I'll take you through the whole process of using the teeth whitening strips, how to put them on, how to use them, and we'll see at the end how much whitening that I actually get. Okay, so before I ever whiten anyone's teeth in the dental office, we always check with a um, shade guide to see where, what our starting color is and then what our ending color is. It's always important to do this without direct light because it can kind of skew how your tooth looks and the shade that it is. Um, so I'm just going to check here which shade I am starting off at and then we'll check the shade when I'm all done the treatment after the 14 treatments. So looking here, I think I have a bit of translucency in my teeth just from acid wear over time but I believe that for tooth whitening purposes, I think my front teeth might be a little bit closer to the S6. I wanna explain the bleaching shade guide that I'm using. Um, it's not a standard Vita shade guide that is used by a dentist uh, when they're determining the color of a crown or a filling material used for the front teeth. 
that one is much more complex and deals with more shading uh, variations such as more a blue gray color or a yellow orangey color. The tone of the teeth really um, matters when you're doing that. But in terms of bleaching shade guides, we don't need anything too complex because we're just using it as a comparison purpose. But you can see this one, it's all the way from S2 to S40. So this one being a lot more brown and yellow with S2 all the way over on this side being the whitest. So just from looking in the mirror and determining my shade, I think I really am between an S6 and an S8. So I don't have much bleaching to do to reach the whitest tooth color that I can get. Um, I don't know if this will skew the results that some people can get, but if your teeth are more on the yellow orange side, you might get much better results with this product than I will. Okay, so I'm in the bathroom now. I'm gonna show you how I put the teeth whitening strips onto my teeth. It is a little bit of a process, but it's really important to start with a clean slate so you get the best treatment and the best effect possible. Um, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to floss my teeth and then I'm going to brush my teeth without toothpaste. It's really important that you don't use toothpaste prior to putting on the teeth whitening strips on your teeth because toothpaste contains different remineralizing agents and um, prevention for acid erosion. So because it puts this protective layer on your teeth, sometimes there's theories that it can actually prevent the teeth whitening component, the product, from entering your tooth and providing you with the best outcome. So I'm going to floss my teeth and then quickly brush them and then we'll put on the strip on my teeth. So I've got my favorite floss, Coco Floss. I'm non-sponsored by the way. I just love the product, love how it feels, love how it tastes. So I'm going to wrap it around my fingers and I'm going to floss my teeth here quick. So it's really important to get that C-shape technique um, because the more you wrap it around your tooth, the more surface area you're going to cover. I love using a rope floss like this that is more textured because it picks up more plaque and bacteria Okay, I'm gonna floss the bottom teeth now. I do have a wire on the back of my bottom front teeth, so um, instead of flossing for this, I'm just going to use a little interdental brush. So now I'm going to brush my teeth without toothpaste. I do use a little bit of water. That's just my preference. If you haven't brushed in over a few hours, you'll probably want to do more thorough brushing. So we've got the teeth whitening package here with two strips. I'm going to open it up. So you get one longer strip for your top teeth and then one shorter strip for your bottom teeth. So now that I have a clean slate and my teeth are clean and free of plaque, food, bacteria, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry my tooth off. So what I do when I've used whitening strips in the past, I kind of tuck my, tuck my lip kind of away from the tooth surface so not as much saliva can hit the tooth. So I'm going to do the bottom first. I find it's easier to do the bottom first because once I put it on the top, my mouth can feel like there's something in there and I start to salivate more. We have a large salivary gland underneath our tongue. So um, when I put it on the top first, I salivate more, so more pools on the bottom, which makes it harder to dry and I get less adhesion uh, from the teeth whitening strip. So we're gonna do the bottom one first. So I'm just gonna dab this with a paper towel. And you wanna avoid um, the gum line when you're putting these on your teeth. We don't need to whiten our gums, just our teeth. Okay, now I'm gonna do the top line. I'll line up the center. If 
So I always press it down just to make sure it has the highest contact with the surface area of the tooth. All right, there we go. One thing I will say is that this actually can taste, it actually tastes a lot better than some of the other whitening strips that I've used in the past. Okay, so I'm gonna set my timer here for 30 minutes. I'm gonna wait for that amount of time and I'll be back to take them off. Okay, I'm back. The 30 minutes is done. I'm going to stop that. So I find the taste much better than uh, other white strips that I've used, such as Crest. Anyways, I really want these off my teeth. I feel like I can't swallow my saliva. So let me take them off um, and then we'll go from there. So when I take them off, I just hook my finger in and I fall. They're really stuck on the teeth. So that's really good adherence um, because I dry the teeth so well. I'm just going to quickly brush my top teeth. Okay, I'm gonna take the bottom one off. Yeah, I really have to pull those off, that's good. Okay, so now I'm just going to brush my teeth, get rid of any excess material that's on. I'm just gonna brush my teeth. Okay, so once the strips are off your teeth and you have um, brushed your teeth with toothpaste, you don't want to rinse with any water because rinsing with water will rinse away all the active ingredient in the toothpaste that will help desensitize your teeth but also help prevent against more acid erosion and help strengthen up your tooth. So after tooth whitening, the pores of the teeth kind of open up. So your tooth kind of turns into a dry sponge. So anything you eat for the next few hours or drink, especially coffee, tea, wine, uh, any dark fruits like blueberries or uh, vegetables like, um, like spinach, for example, it can really cause the teeth to absorb the pigment and you're not going to get as best of a result as you could if you didn't do that. So that was my first treatment. I'm pretty happy with just how it tasted, how it felt on my teeth. I got really good adherence, so that's very, very good. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna continue to do this twice a day. I'm gonna do it once more tonight. And then for the next, well, six days following, I'm gonna do the treatments twice a day. And then I'll meet you back here once the treatment is all done. We'll go over the shade guide again to see how much of a, res of a result that I get. And we'll go from there. So I finished all 14 treatments of the High Smile PAP whitening strips. Um, it's been eight days instead of seven. I had a wedding to go to last night, so um, I did not do my last treatment last night. I did it today instead. Um, but one thing about the product, when you get it, there's no instructions on how many days it's supposed to take you to do the treatment. So usually with Crest White Strips, you do two a day. So that's why what I assumed with this product. Um, I wish they did say it though in the instructions because if you're a first time user or you don't have a lot of experience with using pressed white strips or any other teeth whitening um, at home treatments, you don't really know how often to use it um, and for how long. So some people might do one a day for two weeks. I did two a day for one week. Another thing that I wanted to mention was just in terms of tooth sensitivity, what I felt. I had barely any tooth sensitivity whatsoever. Um, I did have an ice cream sandwich. It was like the last warm day here uh, where I live. So I thought I'd treat myself to a ice cream sandwich. 
and I did have the tiniest bit of sensitivity. But in comparison with using other whitening um, products such as like the carbamide or hydrogen peroxide that I use from the dental office or Crest White Strips, I get so much more sensitivity with those and sometimes I even need to take breaks while I'm using the product. But for this, I did eight straight days of teeth whitening um, with really no sensitivity. In terms of how white my teeth got, I'm just going to measure it with the teeth shade guide. I really don't think that I got as good as a result with this product as I would if I was using Crest White Strips or my take home trays um, that I had made at my dental office. I don't know the percentage of this product. That's another thing. I don't know what the results are supposed to be. There's no real guideline that I could find online. Um, but in terms of whitening, I did get some, but just not to the level that I would have if I was doing another way of teeth whitening with peroxide. We have a friend. Say hello. This is Leslie. He is almost seven months old. He likes to hop up on the counter when I'm brushing or brushing my teeth or doing anything else. Hey, buddy. Okay. Okay, so the lighting, I'm in the bathroom, so the lighting isn't as good um, as it would be if it was in daytime. But for checking your shade of tooth, you never wanna be in direct light. Like you don't have a flashlight or if you're at the dental office, they don't always put the overhead light to shine on your teeth when they're taking your shade. They just kinda of want a nice ambient light so you can um, have no real reflections coming off of your teeth. So in terms of the shade guide, I'm just gonna look in the mirror here. So, I think I'm definitely around an S4. So it is close. My teeth do have a bit of translucency again. These are opaque, so it's gonna look a little bit different, but in terms of the coloration, yeah, definitely an S4. And I did start off between um, an S6 and an S8. So kind of these, these ones here. So if I take this one, you can see how there is a bit of a difference. I think it just took away my, the underlying yellow tones. Um, but my teeth, I whitened them at the beginning of the year, so about eight, nine, nine months ago. Um, so I didn't have as much room to whiten as some other people would if you haven't whitened in a while. So it's really hard to say what results you'll get individually if you're using this product. Um, for myself, I probably would not use this again because I prefer the results that I get from using the carbamide or the hydrogen peroxide uh, treatments. Um, the only time I think I would ever recommend this to one of my patients or to any of you is if you have a history of a lot of tooth sensitivity while teeth whitening. That's, I think, the only reason why I would recommend it. I mean, it's a great product, but I think there is a bit of room for improvement. I would love to know the percentage, um, if they can add more PAP to the product to make a bigger difference, how that would affect the teeth whitening uh, results. But Overall, it's not a bad product. If you wanted to try it, I would say go for it. I hope you guys have found this information useful uh, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.